So this may be an emotional subject for some, I'm sure it's going to get a lot of comments, but let's talk about why guys, especially guys, cheat. For this video, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back in time. Back in time, long, long, long time ago, long before Jesus, when we were all living in caves, beating ourselves over the head with clubs, hunting for hunting and foraging for food, you know, that kind of stuff. Thousands and thousands of years ago, when we were all, believe it or not, in Africa. The world back then was an incredibly dangerous place. The, the, the prospect of you living to 20 was pretty minuscule. In fact, if, if you lived 17 years old, you were, you were doing pretty well in the world. You were an old guy at 17 years old. You know, forget about living to 40, 50, 60, 70, 90 years of your today. If you hit 17 or 20, you were doing real well in the world and you had good chances. You were probably, you were probably the king caveman at the time. Now, obviously, for, for Og the Caveman, that brings out a very big problem. If he reaches sexual maturity, let's say he reaches sexual maturity at 15, okay? He probably has, if he's lucky, two to five years of breeding, and that's it. Before, you know, he gets hit by some disease, gets eaten by a predator, falls, you know, falls ill, Gets, gets attacked in a war between the neighboring a neighboring tribe. You know, all mother of things could have happened to him, basically. So he only has two or three years where he can actually go ahead and make the babies. That is a big problem for Og the Caveman at this point. The world is an even more dangerous place for the women. Let, let, let's think about childbirth for a second. Let's think about pregnancy. We are in a, thousands of years back in a very wild world where there's predators and diseases everywhere and you are going to be walking around with a baby inside you you're going to be very immobile and the chances of actually making through the the eight months of pregnancy are fairly slim on top of that the chance of you and your child surviving childbirth without modern medicine that's nothing short of a miracle. So pregnancy, especially for the women, is incredibly risky at this time. But as humans became more advanced, this became a little bit of a problem because they wanted to keep land in the families and they wanted inheritance, keeping land in the families, you know, keeping the cave in the family, whatever it is. In a situation where all the caveman is running loose everywhere, you know, having babies with everything that moves basically, like an animal, essentially he was, how can we trace who is related to who? It's, it's basically impossible at that point. That is where the very concept of marriage and, you know, fidelity and everything else kind of creeps into, creeps into modern day life at that point. If we're still talking thousands of years ago, is they wanted to know who was related to who. And women at that time also became a valuable resource. So if you looked the wrong way at Og's woman, you'd probably get beaten over the head by a club or something. So the concept of marriage and relationships and everything was born at that point thousands of years ago, long, long, long time before Jesus and everything else. But here is the problem. Uh, we haven't had an update in the firmware on our brain since those thousands and thousands of years ago, unfortunately. So Og the Caveman is still up there, he's still saying, Woman, must make baby, must make baby now, must make baby. He's still saying that, unfortunately. The good news is, is that most guys have the ability to turn that off. They have the ability to say, Og the Caveman, I know there's a hot girl over there, but you know what? I'm not going to listen to you, I'm married, period. Unfortunately, some people can't, and that is when cheating comes into it. Now, all forms of cheating is, is bad. There's no, there's, no, there's no right cheating, there's no right reason for cheating, there's no right reason for infidelity. It's all bad. 
But there are mainly two types of cheating, what I can see. There is situational cheating, which is very dangerous, and there is transitional cheating, which is kind of just as dangerous, basically. But it's kind of morally licensed by the person that's doing it. Your situational cheater is a guy and a stereotypical douchebag who's basically, he's gonna cheat no matter what, okay? If there's a better option out there that's better than you, he's gonna do it. Only the caveman is still alive and well in his brain, pushing all the buttons, and especially if he has a couple of drinks, Ogly the caveman is gonna get mighty loud and he's gonna wake up in someone's bed. That is it. He is taking advantage of a situation. That's why I call it situational cheating. There's not much you can do about that other than keep him away from the beer or something. There's not much you can do about situational cheating. He's gonna be cheated. He's probably his whole entire life. End of story. You got big problems with this dude. That's it. The other type is transitional cheating. So transitional cheating happens when the relationship is in trouble. Um, the guy or the girl does not have the strength to fix the relationship. But instead of doing the right thing and saying, okay, I'm gonna end the relationship, I'm not gonna cheat until the divorce papers are signed, then I'm gonna give myself time to think about everything that's happened and then maybe I'll start dating again. They want this kind of transitional step. They want a stepping stone. So they take advantage of a situation or they find someone and they find someone for security. For security that, that when this relationship fails, they'll be able to transition to another relationship. That is transitional cheating. And transitional cheating involves a heck of a lot of lying as well. So they're both as bad as each other. I wouldn't say any one of them is worse. I would say that transitional cheaters try to morally license themselves by saying, well, the relationship was over and this, that, and the other, and try and validate what they are saying. But at the end of the day, transitional cheating is still tra cheating. It's transitional cheating because the relationship, for whatever reason, is in some form of transition, but it's still transitional cheating. Until the divorce papers are signed and you have them in your hand, and you've had time to think about it, then don't cheat. Because until the papers are signed, it's still cheating. One way or another, it's still cheating, it's still gonna hurt people. The way for guys to combat all of this is to realize that we are not in Africa, in the Serengeti anymore, you know, struggling to make babies and struggling to keep our, uh, keep our species alive. I don't think uh, the humankind is anywhere close to extinction anytime soon, basically. And, you know, if you, if you lose a partner, and if something happens, if she walks out, if she divorces you, whatever happens, you will have the ability, I am 100% sure, to find someone new within months if you wanted to, with probably within weeks if you wanted to, if you, if you were so inclined. So there is no urgency to actually find another relationship and you have to get that into your head. There is no urgency. If the relationship was to fail for some reason, it is not gonna end mankind. That's the truth of it. The other truth is that you don't have to be making babies with everything that moves, basically. You know, modern medicine and modern healthcare is so good, and we have you know, ways we can adopt children now, and all kinds of things, the tools that are available to us, shall we say, that there is no, there is no reason to think like all the cavemen anymore. And also, you know, there are thousands, probably millions of children in this world that get abandoned in hospitals. Think about that. Do you have to try and repopulate the world when kids have been abandoned in hospitals because their mothers or fathers don't want them? Think about adoption. Yeah. If you really want kids, and you really want kids that bad, and you really want more kids, adopt some kids. Don't cheat. 
you know, sex is sex. Sex is basically going to feel the same with whoever you have, whoever you do it with. It doesn't really matter. So why not keep it in a monogamous, monogamous relationship? And if you want a bunch of kids, go ahead and adopt some. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Click down there, like, share and subscribe. And I will talk to you again soon.